Undersizing a structural ridge beam could be very problematic as this is the main structural element of your roof structure and it could lead to sagging by several inches or even worse, flat out failing if it is grossly undersized. So how do you size a ridge beam appropriately so that none of those issues happen? Well, that's what we're gonna answer today later in the video, but first let's start by trying and installing that ridge beam. Because there are going to be an overhang on this back side wall, I'm going to have to cut and just leave maybe six inches at the top for the overhang. I just want to like slide back. <laughs> One second. Ah! Okay, it's in it. <laughs> no, you do this side, right? <laughs> Be too, too bad. Let me move it here first. Ah, okay. 
putain Ok, it's not in there, but... Right, push <laughs> Okay, let it go. There you go, here. Just skip sliding. All right. No, I can't do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's lay it back down. I'm, I mean, I'm, I don't think I'll make it right now. Yeah, the struggle was real trying to install the second ridge as the beam pocket really made our lives harder. So let's just take a quick break and talk about how I designed that ridge beam. Because I have a cathedral ceiling, the ridge is what we call a structural ridge and will have to be designed to support half of the roof's structure. So how do we not end up in the situation I just talked about? Well, you gotta do some basic analysis. I mean, I'm going to simplify everything a little bit here, but you know, let's look at the structure. You're probably familiar with it if you've seen the plan. It's 20 foot wide, so half of that is gonna get supported by the ridge, and the other half on each side um, is getting to the exterior walls. So the codes actually tells you what load to apply. They define two main type of loads, dead loads, which are the loads of the structure itself, meaning the rafter, the sheathing, the insulation, etc. And it's typically 15 pounds per square foot. And live loads is pretty much people or any movable object and is usually taken to be 20 pounds per square foot for a roof. In my area, I also have to consider snow loads, um, and uh, which is actually 30 pounds per square foot. Uh, because you know you could end up with like a feet of snow just sitting on your roof so obviously that will depend on your local code on your local area uh, but those numbers are you know fairly typical so go to 40web.com and create an account you will be able to create a new project and select a drop beam design here you'll get to choose the the slope of your roof and also what kind of deflection criteria you want I think you should use improve. That means it's a little bit more stringent than just the basic code requirement. After that, you get to select what span, which is uh, 18 in my case, and then you apply your loads. So just like we went over, 15 pounds per square foot for dead load, um, the live load is already set to 20, and my snow is gonna be 30 PSF. After that, you can enter your roof slope again, and then the tributary width is 10 foot, which is half of the roof, uh, the total roof width. After that, you get to choose really which members you want. So let's just have a run first and run with commodity lumber, which is just your two by. So I'm selecting Southern Pine number two, two by 12, and four of them. And obviously you can see that this would grossly fail uh, you know, both in strengths and also in deflections. So if this is not working, then we have to go with something stronger, uh, like an engineer type of wood product, such as an LVL. LVL, which stands for Laminated Veneer Lumber, is an engineered wood product that uses multiple layers of thin wood assembled with adhesives and is much stronger than plain lumber or parallel. I like the LVL because it comes in different plies and so it's easier to install. And you can see here, I tried to run an LVL for two ply of 11 and a quarter inches deep, and this is failing. So that's why I ended up going to the size up and, you know, used two plies of 14 inches LVL, which is what I ended up installing. And this is what really was required based on, you know, the cut requirements and also making sure that I didn't want it to have a ridge that was sagging. So builders tend to undersize ridge beams because they just don't run numbers like that. I mean, that's why builders should use engineers, but they usually prefer not to, I mean, at least in my area. I hope this was helpful and let's go back to installing that ridge beam. We want to rotate it yet? Oh, no. All right, let's try it. 
<laughs> All right. You will pull your rope and lift it up. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Ready? All right, push! Okay. Yeah, go. There we go. Okay, we're good now. Uh, it's not. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna make it. I can't make it slide. Oh yeah, that's working a little bit. It's working. The next step now is to attach the two ply of LVL together. I'm using those uh, three inch long GRKs and they will be in attached at 16 inches staggers. Just like that. I am finally updating the Monday counter, I know, it's been a while, it is now sitting at 33 days, as a reminder that is the number of 8 hours days spent so far to get to this point, so that's equivalent to 264 hours worked. And that was it, the ridge was installed, check out the next video where I will install the rafters and hopefully make some progress on the roof structure. Alright, I'll see you next time.